Hello. Good afternoon to all the audience here. And I am very excited to be here. And I feel that all you are also excited to part of this Cube Day India. So here I am going to present this topic. Use Meridio to create network services for teleco use cases using secondary networking for Kubernetes. Right? A little bit about me. I am Gaurav Bhatnagar. I am uh, playing the role of CLN system manager as part of technology system management, business area, cloud services, business and operations support system. And you can see my LinkedIn profile here. You can, we can always connect on the LinkedIn. And basically, I enjoy reading and playing tennis. I am CK certified. I am an AWS cloud practitioner also, and have certifications from DataStack as well as TM Forum. So definitely, we can connect here. So uh, I have been involved with Kubernetes from last around uh, seven, eight years, uh, primarily in the telecom domain. So as part of Ericsson, we are basically in the journey of uh, cloud native, and we are basically deploying our products on the Kubernetes platform. So this is the agenda that I want to cover. Right? So what is Meridio and what is second networking for Kubernetes workloads, telco requirements of Kubernetes workloads, some telco use cases where Meridio can be useful. Right? So secondary networking, so just starting with what is Meridio itself, right? So uh, it is an open source project which provides various capabilities to attract uh, the external traffic within Kubernetes via secondary networking, right? So it is available at the GitHub, uh, and it is primarily written in the Guru primary language. And if you look into Meridio, basically it requires uh, four. It, it works on the Kubernetes 1.21. It requires Spire, Network Service Mesh, and Linux kernel. Basically, Spire is just uh, to give the mutual authentication between different workloads. So it provides uh, MTLS kind of uh, support there for various uh, Meridio ports that are working uh, deploying on the Kubernetes. Network service mesh basically is a hybrid multi-cloud IP service mesh that, for example, it facilitates the, uh, the multi hybrid communication between L3 domain. So if you have your uh, Kubernetes workload deployed across the clusters of VMware or, or across the clouds, you can use network service mesh to create connections between them, right? So basically, this is uh, Meridio, and it is basically using these underlying softwares, right? So bulk of work that, uh, or functionality that Meridio provides is built on the network service mesh. So what is secondary networking? Or So when I first heard this term, I was a little confused. Because if you look into the documentation, it always talks about primary uh, interface and all. So just to uh, what it is all, right? So we have the Kubernetes port with uh, primary network interface, it's zero. You know? So through this uh, interface, all the communication is happening. The liveness probes, readiness probes are working on this, listening to the communication channels and all, right? So now, if uh, there are more network interfaces in your ports, and these network interfaces can be used to talk to other networks, then we basically call these uh, network attachments as secondary network interfaces. So anything other than primary is secondary network interface. So when, because when I first heard these terms, I was a little confused. So I thought it would be good to capture here. So again, coming to what is Meridio, right? So as you see, this is a Kubernetes cluster we have deployed here. And is your user application that is running in a pod. So user application is a container that is running in a user pod. Now, to use the Meridio, what it does, it provides a sidecar container called a TAPA sidecar container. It is called Target Access Point Ambassador. So it is based on the ambassador design pattern. So it provides an interface through which you can control what traffic that is coming to your secondary network interface. So it provides a gRPC API hosted as a sidecar container. So your application is there as part of container itself in the user port, and the Meridio sidecar container is providing you the gRPC interface to connect to the external world, right? Now, there are more components to Meridio. So if you see, uh, this sidecar container in turn talk to a network service. Again, it's a port. And it um, basically provides two functionalities, a traffic, traffic classifier and network service instances. 
So again, VRD operates on layer three, layer four to provide distribution via again so-called secondary networking. So it upholds the traffic separation on the default primary network within the cluster. So the primary network interface is not touched. It is the secondary interface through which all the user plane traffic is passing. And basically, there's a traffic classifier. You can use it to separate the user traffic into multiple groups. So I have example for that. Maybe that will become more clear when we go through. Right. So as we said, uh, we use this term service attractor. right? So what Medido does, basically, it is talking to the external gateways using routing protocols like BGP and all. And it can announce the virtual IP addresses to the external gateways. And through this WIC, it can attract the external traffic towards your TAPA sidecar container, right? So the gate, from the gateway itself, data, data gateway, the traffic is coming to your network service, that is a pod that is deployed in your Kubernetes cluster. And then through that, TAPA sidecar container, right? So user application has the logic to process the external traffic. While external traffic is reaches through your uh, container in the user port through the gRPC API, right? So some of the telecom requirements that we can basically look upon what we expect from the uh, Kubernetes workload, right? So IT industry has been using Kubernetes workloads from quite some time, but telco industry is catching up, and I'm also the part of that industry itself. So, but if you look into a telecom perspective, we have some very specific requirements, like end-to-end -end traffic separation isolation. So basically, in, we want the traffic to be separated from, uh, from the beginner end to the actual pod itself. Network address translation, there's no, there are many protocols in telecom, like SIP, STCP, that basically if, uh, the network address translation is problematic there. Cluster-wide virtual IP as a source address for egress traffic from application ports. So we need a virtual IP or WIP that is same even for the egress traffic, right? So I have a slide for that. I, I think that will make much more sense. And high performance user plane traffic, right? We, for instance, we have the media servers that basically have to download or stream the uh, you, uh, media services or media traffic to the end customer. And there we need a high performance, right? Riley networking of Kubernetes is not that sufficient for that. Support for non-IP protocols like Ethernet and all. So that is the some of the telco requirement that is basically expected from Kubernetes workloads, right? So what I try to cover basically try to capture some telecom use cases, so that we can basically uh, 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 demonstrate or see what is the power of Meridio, how and which of the use cases where it can help, right? So one is this, uh, SSN is a legacy protocol, and it's still used in a number of telecom products. So how the legacy telecom products do IP validation by establishing connection between peers? So still, uh, the peers in SS7 do uh, the IP validation, right? Segregation of ONM and real-time traffic. So real-time traffic is the voice traffic that basically we are making voice calls. ONM traffic is the alarms and operational traffic. So as a telecom operator, they want to segregate this traffic into all together separate paths, right? Classification and steering of traffic, basically, you want to classify and steer traffic based on five tuples, basically the source and destination IP, source and destination ports and protocol, right? So basically, using these five tuples, you want to segregate your traffic, right? So for instance, uh, we, uh, DNS protocol is there. It works on both TCP and UDP on port 53. So might be you want to handle DNS UDP-based traffic and DNS TCP traffic separately, right? So this is example of, again, first use case. We have a signaling protocol, SSM communication happening. So we, our is a user pod, and this can be a remote SSM peer. So I can take example, for instance, this user pod wants to do a location lookup through using this SS7 peer. This is, might be an HLR. So whenever the egress traffic originates, it takes the IP of the worker node, right? So and when we configure in the remote SS7 peer is the load balancer IP. So all the services or whatever services that I want to expose on the Kubernetes is through the load balancer only, right? So I have configured that load balancer IP at the remote SS7 peer. But when, suppose my user port wants to do some lookup, location inquiry, right? It's initiated traffic, and it initiates a query toward the remote SS7 peer. Now what happens is that 
this is the default behavior on the kubernetes since user port ips are ephemeral they don't exist or known to the outside world so when it passes the boundary of the kubernetes cluster it is replaced by the worker node ip now this worker node ip is not recognized by the remote peer because we have configured the load balancer ip right and we don't know where the user pod might reside later on right it can be on the worker node a then it can move to worker node b and that way right so what this problem solved by meridio is that again it has the concept of virtual ip or wip right so rather than publishing address of a load balancer we publish or configure ip address of the wip right now all the traffic that is passing through is through the meridio ports so the egress traffic when it originates basically user application invoke the grpc api of the tapa sidecar container that is target access point ambassador uh, sidecar and then basically it passes through meridio and again uh, then it basically uh, reaches the remote peer so in this case no nat happens because uh, the the meridio ports take care of that and basically uh, your egress traffic has the same ip address that has been configured right so for e for the ingress traffic as well as egress traffic you have the same ip address right so that uh, remote ss7 peer is able to establish the communication because it recognizes that ip right now there is a separate requirement in the uh, telecom that we want to segregate onm and real time traffic right so i have some real time traffic where voice calls are happening i have the onm traffic where uh, monitoring alarms and handling are ha happening so again we can use meridio for this use case for instance in this use case we have segregated this onm traffic and the real time traffic on two separate wips that is wip1 and wip2 right and this meridio uh, what it does it is a conserved trench so trench basically again it's a uh, it's a normally catcher that is there used in meridio it's seen as an extension of the actual uh, network it is a trench that upholds the traffic separation inside each network inside the realm of the cluster so basically trench is uh, if i more go into it it is a custom resource definition but what it does it gives you a functionality to so that you can able to segregate your traffic right so for instance in here what we have done we have created two uh, interfaces uh, nsm0 nsm1 and we have published wip1 and wip2 so using this you can basically segregate your real time traffic as well as onm traffic so on total different uh, network paths so for instance one can be on the vlan 100 other can be vlan 200 that way now classification and steering of traffic is another important use case where meridio can be very useful right so what i have taken a use case here that suppose you want have requirement that you have a dns traffic and you want to handle dns udp traffic and tcp traffic separately right so here what is in this diagram what happens is flow a takes care of the udp part of the dns while flow b takes care of the tcp part so flow to a take the udp based dns traffic which passes the conduit through stream 1 and into target a application while flow b takes care of the tcp traffic right so uh, so let's go to the next slide so what uh, st starting point is that we have uh, deployed our user pod with a tapa sidecar uh, container so we have the user application and the tapa sidecar container running as the user pod now we have also deployed the meridio ports so first we create a trench so trench is as, as we discussed it's defined the extension of the uh, external network into the kubernetes cluster so it's nothing but say again a custom resource definition that is created right so when we create a trench basically we are create a configuration within the kubernetes in the config map right now uh, we have created a trench so this trench can talk to external data center right now then we create a web so web basically again publishes a unique a virtual ip that is known to the external data center and these wips are are basically uh, basically user application is listening on these wips on the secondary network interface using the tapa sidecar container so basically we have create a web here and we have set a web with a trench so we have created web one similarly web two can be created and can be assigned an address right Again, conduit basically is uh, 
again a custom resource definition there in uh, Meridio. Basically, what it does, it provides as of now a stateless load balancer. So you have multiple ports, so it can load balance your traffic across that port, right? So again, we create a conduit, we associate it with a trench, right? So now what we have done, basically created a stream. Basically, stream is a logical grouping of traffic flow. The stream points to the conduit where the traffic can pass. So it is an actual network entity in which you in which you refer to in your target application, right? And so we basically create a stream, as in this example YAML, we associate with a conduit and trench, right? And now we create a flow, right? This flow basically what we are doing, this flow basically classifies your incoming traffic in the base of five tuples, that is source address uh, and destination address and the ports, right? And protocol, right? So basically, as part of this YAML, example YAML, we have created a flow A, with that is associated with trench A in this, with the stream one, and we also associated a VIP, and basically it, it's accepting all the traffic, on, and the destination port is 53, and the port is, uh, and protocol is UDP, right? Because we want to classify as defined the use case itself TNS traffic on the TCP and UDP, right? Now, what is basically we have created a flow, but again, we the, the traffic will come to the data center gateway, so we need to talk to the data center gateway. So there is the, another custom resource definition in the, the Meridio that is called gateway. Basically, gateway is nothing but it uh, basically it, it is a peer to the data center gateway node, and it basically mimics or basically have the configuration to talk to the uh, data center gateway. So in the uh, so in this slide itself, we have created a gateway object, custom resource definition that is associated with the trench A, and we basically give an address which gateway we talk to and what are the basically configuration or the uh, specs through which it can talk to that gateway, right? Now, basically, this is comes the attractor part. So attractor is the uh, custom resource definition in the Meridio that basically the uses the gateway configuration to talk to the external gateway and extract the traffic from the external data center into the Kubernetes cluster. So it basically attracts and basically advertises this IP that is, okay, this is a virtual IP that needs to, uh, and this IP needs to be, this tra traffic towards this IP needs to be routed to this, this cluster. So this, it passes through the flow, through this conduit stream, and then to the target application, target application B. So using this, we basically can split the traffic TCP and UDP traffic in, uh, for the target A application and a target B application, right? So it is basically you can use here I example of IPv4, but you can IP use an I configuration for IPv6 also. So if in all, if I try to summarize, uh, what are the key takeaway points that we can, uh, I want to summarize? So. So Biridio can be used to facilitate attraction and distribution of external traffic within Kubernetes via so-called secondary routing with minimum changes to your application. So basically, your primary interface of Kubernetes is not touched. So the, all your readiness probes or liveness probes that our primary interface is not touched. So it is not expected uh, to that you change your Kubernetes application to work with Biridio. But uh, what you need to do, you need to deploy a Stapa sidecar container within your uh, user port, and then you can use that gRPC API provided by the side, type of sidecar container to talk to the, in the external world, right? So basically, it, is, it doesn't expect that you change your architecture or deployment model as such. It works with that only, right? It, it again, uh, next point, basically, it provides a sidecar container using a gRPC API, right? So you can start stop traffic toward the user port. So basically, using that gRPC API, you can start the traffic, stop the traffic, right? What is traffic that is coming from the external data center gateway towards your secondary networking interface, towards your user port? So using this uh, TAPA sidecar container, using the API hosted there, you can basically start and stop the traffic, right? You have the control there. As a user application, your application is processing the data, so you have the control there uh, uh, on the traffic itself, how the traffic needs to come, how the traffic needs to be classified in that way. And the third point takeaway, I can say that service address and webs are announced to the external data center via different kinds of routing protocols by Meridio front-end. So front-end basically the component that is front-ending 
with the external data center. It basically hosts the attractor and the gateway components. So it is uh, attracting the external traffic on that web itself. So it basically advertises that this is the virtual IP for which it wants to attract the traffic. And when the traffic lands on that Kubernetes cluster, it basically classifies the traffic based on your configuration, and it lands to the top of sidecar container and then consumed by your user application. So again, it can solve different telco use cases, which are other quite tricky to solve using existing primary network interface of Kubernetes workloads. So again, a lot many uh, uh, telco work workloads or use cases can be solved here, right? Because primary interface, uh, by default, what you get out of Kubernetes is the primary interface. And there are a lot of use cases, like for instance, we discussed that uh, if you want to high performance user plane traffic, right? Again it's still tricky to solve through the primary interface. You need some secondary interface through which high-speed data that can come to your application itself, right? So these uh, are the key takeaways. So I, I've captured here that some references that are quite good. For instance, one talk by Leon in, in this here, it is very good. So it gives you a internal working of the, how this uh, video is happening, right? It is. Uh, very well explained there, right? So you can look into that stock itself uh, to understand how Meridio is working, uh, what is the role NSM is playing there, right? So with this, thank you again. This is my LinkedIn ID. Uh, you can always reach me uh, on this LinkedIn ID. And again, thanks for giving uh, patience listening, and thanks for your time for coming for this talk. Thank you. Any questions? I'm here. So my question is, uh, if I want to expose multiple source IP address right, right. and each one for different different destination IP address, then maximum how many source IP address it can retain for inter-cluster? So basically, uh, you, you define a uh, configuration that makes target what you want to achieve, right? So you can uh, configure multiple WIPs, right? So basically, right. It, depend, uh, it depends how much uh, IP that you want to expose, right? Yes. Within your cluster, it's not an issue, but outside, outside the cluster, outside the cluster, basically, when the issue is that when your egress traffic goes out, it takes the IP of your uh, worker node, right? Uh, but sorry. right, but man, in, uh, you may not want that case to happen, uh, right? You want uh, to have your services to have a consistent IP even when the uh, your traffic goes out of the uh, cluster itself, right? Yeah. So that IP, I don't want only one IP. See, if I want to. Talk Destination one, I will use source one. If I want to talk destination two, I will use source two. Uh, and none of them will translate to worker node with this design. So how many source one, source two, up to source n? How many such n source IP uh, my port can have it? Virtual IP I can it have? You can add um, number of virtual IP. As such, there is no limit. It depends on the application because these traffic that is coming on your uh, on these virtual IPs is consumed by your uh, target application itself, right? Correct. So Correct. each IP represents a service itself, right? So Correct. there is not limit as such, right? Uh, but Correct. you can define a limit, for instance, you can define a max target itself that, okay, I want to only expose 100 targets itself. But you can expose multiple WIPs, even can you can basically consume traffic of the multiple tips, WIPs within your uh, user cluster by the same port itself. That okay, way. thank you. I have a small question in this context, and, I, and yeah. I'm just asking a very basic uh, understanding. So this WIPs and all, do you need a, a multi-CNI to create this? How does it, because secondary interfaces are normal in telco world, they're always a multi-CNI, and then it creates this virtual um, Ethernet, VTH zeros and all, and then is it something in between, or you can, 
I'm just, and is it, sec, is it sim, very similar to Envoy in oh. primary, right? Is, is this uh, Meridio is very similar to Envoy in primary? Is it uh, correct understanding actually? What? Uh, I, I, correct in a way that basically use the Multis to create a secondary interface. Right. But what it does, basically Multis uh, is a uh, uh, multiplexer, right? It basically creates a CNI of CNI, right? So it, it will help you create a secondary network interface, right? Yeah, and then virtualize also, right? Uh, right, right? All of those uh. use cases, right? What I was but mentioning. After creating a secondary interface, you want to attract traffic to that secondary interface, right? And basically, you want to have uh, services that as published passing through. Because unless until you, you code in your application itself to uh, uh, listen to that uh, secondary network interface, things will not happen. Where Meridio help is, basically, it again uses an underlying LSM, right? A lot of wiring work is done by the LSM only. So it creates. Uh, Basically, uh, what uh, Multis is doing is it's done by this NSM itself. So it creates a secondary inter interface in your pod itself. And then basically, Meridio, what it does, it basically using the attractors and gateway, uh, attract the traffic, uh, what uh, the web address that you have published on that secondary interface. So NSM, the uh, network service mesh, basically is what is doing that you will expect your Multis. So, but Multis has a specific purpose. You create a secondary network interface, and then you are there. But you have to basically uh, develop an application or your logic itself to attract traffic to that. Your pod itself uh, will not listen to that secondary network interface. Your all services will work on the primary network interface. Okay. So you're saying is that there's there's a network service mesh, and on top of that, this right. uh, architecture of Meridio fits. Right. 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 So there's no need of multi CNIs as such. Uh, uh, as such, but uh, there is a configuration where you can use Multus also uh, within the NSM also. Basically, Multus, what Got is happening is basically is giving you a flexibility or functionality to create secondary network interface. Absolutely. So NSM is also doing the same thing, right? Okay. So it is doing Not much more way. than that, right? Yeah, yeah. Got it. Got it. Thank you. So like. Uh, in our environment, uh, we are uh, moving uh, from service mesh Istio to Cilium uh, to minimize that sidecar container context. And uh, we were using Multus uh, in there, in user plane functions uh, we have. So how, like, like uh, uh, in here, Tapa is acting as a sidecar container. So is, it, is there any way that uh, it can be uh, handled without sidecar container, like the kernel space, you know, it can handle and they provision those. Things. Okay. Uh, the present architecture, what we have is the Meridio itself, it uses sidecar container because what it does basically, the sidecar container holds or basically give you a gRPC API interface where your uh, user container within that user pod can query and basically get the data, right? So th uh, this is how it works, right? So basically, the sidecar container is giving you flexibility in the sense that your application is remain what it is, right? It it only needs to call gRPC API to get that external traffic, right? And you and definitely you need to do the configuration and all that for hold this thing to working. But your application can work the same, right? You you just need to add a sidecar container to your uh, user pod and then call the API and then basically you can uh, the when using GPC API you can consume that traffic itself right so you need to have a sidecar container tapa sidecar container to basically use this uh, hi uh, so my question is how do we scale the pods here because uh, is the VIP associated with each pod or is it at the service level if it's at the pod level, then we might have to create the other resources, right? The trench and the VIP uh, CRs itself. Again, it depends on your application, how basic load intensive, how it is there, right? Okay. So Meridio, what it does, it is giving you a virtual IP where you are exposing your services, right? So same uh, the pod itself. So each uh, uh, pod, it's, each pod will have a one sidecar container. That is the right. And the number of ports that are there as part of the Meridi application itself. So it depends on how your application basically uh, looking right, or what are the uh, throughput requirements of there, right? So that needs to be worked out right that way. So for each port, we'll be having one trench defined, or is it at the service level? So this. Uh,
So again, here basically one user port has one sidecar container, and again these set of ports that are part of the Meridio ports are common, right? So these are uh, you can say this this is part of something underlying infrastructure that all ports they can use, right? So but again, uh, the, you might want to create a replica sets or replicas of the pod itself, right? So it depends on on the throughput itself, but once deployed in your cluster itself, this is uh, the network service is common for all the ports, right? The TAPA sidecar container is specific to your user port, but this ne the network service is common. That oh. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Again, thank you all for uh, asking questions and coming here, giving your time. Thank you all.